but we're working with limited SD space here on our card, on the camera, so we're gonna go really fast, okay? So, let's flash back to a week ago, a really good friend of mine and I, we were watching one of the myriad movies out there about the creation of the universe, and um, we loved doing that, and um, it was great. It was the one that Timothy Ferris did, if you want to uh, look it up, and I know there's millions of them, but look for the newest one that Timothy Ferris did, really good. In any case, we get towards the end, and Stephen Hawking is presenting, as you know, I'm sure, his theory that perhaps there was no beginning or end of time, but in fact, it might fold in on itself. Because remember, like, God, this is going back to, like, the mid-90s, when he first started to propose that theory in regards to space. Um, remember, like, we were trying to measure how big space was, we knew it was expanding, but we also thought that perhaps it had, like, outer limits, but then he thought that perhaps that it didn't, perhaps it was infinite, but not infinitely out, but infinite in the way that it would fold in on itself, like this. And now he's proposing the same thing with time as well, and he used the Earth as an example, meaning Okay, how can you ask what the outermost limits of space? It would be the same thing like saying, what is the most north of the North Pole? There's not. All of a sudden you get to the point you're at the most north, and then you start to just curve around again. So, we've been studying this stuff in a lot of different areas. Richard Bach, when he went through his whole phase during the 80s, his books started to talk about that same, that same thing. And then... Um, it's a fascinating concept. If you remember also during the 90s when all those books were being written about quantum mechanics and uh, the fourth dimension, etc., etc., and now of course the super string theory, um, we're getting closer and closer to this whole idea. Um, black holes, wormholes, time portals, blah, 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 blah. It's really fascinating stuff. Of course, right now it's all pretty much theoretical, um, except for the fact that. Stephen Hawking and so many other cosmologists, NASA and physicists, are now working on it mathematically, actually trying to prove it formulaically rather than just theoretically. And I think that probably in our lifetimes we will get to that point where we realize it. All right, so, last night, I watched a movie that was recommended to me called Kate and Leopold. You know, good little movie, um, starring Meg Ryan and a very young looking um, Hugh Jackman. And it's a very enjoyable film if you like the romantic comedy type of movie. Um, and it talked about the exact same thing. So, let's take a look at the implications first and then go back to the theory and how it might work. Because what I think that for all of us, the most interesting aspect of it is what are the implications to our own lives? And how can we then explain some of the weird things that kind of happen to us, like synchronicity or coincidences that are not necessarily coincidental. Um, cosmic accidents, for instance. Meeting someone and feeling like you've known them before. Um, having the, the deja vu experience, or even those bigger deja vu experiences. You know how you have the little deja vu experience, it's just like, BAM! Deja vu. But then you have the bigger deja vu experience where it's like, 20 seconds or three minutes and you're in this experience having a conversation with somebody, blah, 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 and you're looking around and you realize you've been there before? Has that ever happened to you? Um, well, if it has, don't tell anybody because I'll probably lock you up until we prove this theory is really true. But, um, in any case, that stuff happens to all of us all the time and we all wonder what's going on. Um, so, what I did after the movie because I was so inspired was I decided to, first off, map out the way we currently view time. So we would put the Big Bang here, right? And we would put time in a linear fashion, this being the past, this being we are here, and this being the future. Everything that we think is going to happen to us, whether it's tomorrow or in 20 years, right? That's the way we look at time right now. Which is fascinating when you think about it, because intuitively I feel that it's totally wrong. And I bet you do too. I was probably going to turn this off. I thought I was psycho. All right. So then I started to try to focus in on what would it look like if it wasn't that other way? What if time was not linear? Now, 
What I did is I put this here as if it was a big circle, all right? This would be time, more in a nonlinear fashion. We would still be here, all right? And then time would be kind of here, past and future, 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 right? I thought I was onto something. The problem that I found over the last 12 hours looking at it is the fact that we still have a linear kind of a thing happening here. So let's get rid of that and pretend that it's all a circle. In other words, the way we'd really want it to be would be, we would be more like here in the center, right? That's where we would be. And time would extend outward. So in other words, the past could be here, 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 future, 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 future. Now, this same friend of mine happened to comment, and she's a little bit sometimes more ahead of me on this stuff as far as just looking at it visually or graphically. She said that it would have to be in these almost like concave, like tornado or funnel-like forms. In other words, this is two-dimensional. We are here, time extends out this way, folding in on itself, which would help explain being able to say, feel like we're here now, and yet, I know you, or I knew you, or in the future I will know you, blah, 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 because past, future, past, future, past, future. And yet, she said, watch this, make it three-dimensional. See what we're doing? So we're not just extending out this way, all right? But we're also now going to extend out this way, like in a cone shape as well. And then we would also extend out, so to speak, this way in a cone shape, in a more three-dimensional way. That would, ex that would totally get rid of the whole like linear way that we were looking at time, where it's like the past is here, we're here, and the future's here. And I think this is kind of a good beginning. We'll obviously explore this a lot more you know, as time goes on, or as time doesn't go on, but as time continues to curve in on itself, or fold in on itself, or whatever. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though, from a skeptical point of view, I know that I'm filming this for you right now, and then I'm going to turn it off. And that is going to happen in the future. After I turn it off, I'm going to take the camera and hook it up to my laptop. And I'm going to look at turning off the camera as the past. So, that's still a linear experience of time moving from this way to that way. Now, if something crazy happened, like I turn the camera off, take it to my laptop, and then I find myself back filming the same episode, then perhaps we could prove this in an experiential way rather than just theoretical. And that, my friends, is the biggest challenge, is how do we take this and turn it into something that we can really experience as opposed to just talk about. So until next time, let's keep thinking about this, and as always, thanks for tuning in.